At approximately 3.15 p.m. on October 13, 2015, a call came into the Nye County Dispatch Center for an unresponsive male experiencing a medical emergency at the Love Ranch. The patient identified as Lamar Odom. Odom is on a ventilator in a coma. Multiple drugs were found in his system, and there are reports he used synthetic Viagra. My doctors told all of my loved ones to say a friendly goodbye. Demonstrated evidence of multi-organ system failure, multiple strokes, significant cardiac damage, kidney damage, liver failure. Lamar, I mean, he lost his mom at 12 years of age to colon cancer. I mean, how can a kid go through that? And then his father had a substance use problem on top of it. My grandmother and my son dying on the same day, four or five years apart, in the prime of my career. And when that happened to me, I felt like I wanted to quit. He was a wounded individual, but in the right time, in the right place, with the right help, you know, he could blossom. When Greg called me to come to Florida to do the ketamine, I thought he was nuts. I'm all about getting better, especially at this stage in my life. But doing hallucinogenics is something I've always been trying to stay away from. It's time for liftoff. You ready? Yes, sir. Lamar? Whoa. You're on a journey. Yeah. Try, try to just be with it. I told him I'd been preparing him for something big, the most powerful plant psychedelic known to man. If you might set up a purpose, you might start preparing yourself. They're getting in touch with aspects of themselves that have been elusive, very important aspects of themselves and probably account for some of why they're suffering. He likely has suffered from chronic PTSD that has re-exacerbated over time as more traumas have occurred. I just want to be better. Get rid of uh, addiction, anxiety. If I can help all that out with just, you know, a treatment like this, then why not? Why not give it a shot? Oh, wow, man. So you spent, was it the last two years on this project? Yeah, I, I, it's about two and a half years. And um, I got to spend a good bit of time with Lamar and, and you know, kind of give him that psychedelic intervention. And I think, you know, when you see the movie and you see along the way, um, some of the gratitude moments that he has, you know, his mom passed away when he was 12 years old of cancer. He got to, you know, during his experience, he got to hear his mother's voice for the first time in decades mm -hmm. and his grandmother's voice who raised him, who passed away. And then he had this uh, infant son who died at six months old. He actually, in this psychedelic experience, got to see his son at six months old, saw him grow to be eight or nine years old, then got to grow to, you know, see him at as a teenager. And it's like, he was like, I'm so grateful like just for that that ch changed my whole life you know and so you know you just see how these you know incredible compounds they're really just frequencies you know whether it's a mushroom or anything else like you put that frequency vibration into your frequency vibration and then you synthesize that and i think a lot of the experience there you know we know with ketamine treatments medically it can build neural pathways in the brain we know that psilocybin mushrooms are growing neural pathways and so you know these are gratitude pathways these aren't the same pathways that you know you have loops for like you know i i messed up my family or i'm a drug addict or whatever it was you know these are deep patterns and so these new patterns that you make with these compounds these are patterns that are like here i am in the present moment i'm really grateful and i'm going forward in the future and so for me, it's like, wow, what a what an incredible way to, you know, access gratitude. And I think in the future, uh, when psychedelic medicines become the total norm and, you know, psilocybin mushrooms are, replace every antidepressant out there and other compounds are found to be as incredible as that, uh, I think this is going to be a way where if somebody says, I can't, you know, find any gratitude, I can't find you know, any type of meaning. Uh, I can't figure out a reason to care. It's like, no problem. 
here we go, you know, let's build some new neural pathways and you'll just, this will be a natural process. So I'm so excited to be living in this time where, you know, we, we have over 50 years now where this, uh, these psychedelic medicines have been sort of illegal and not even able to be studied. And now they're coming out in this renaissance in this, unfortunately, because of the mental health crisis we're having, but thank God they're coming out and, the byproduct of that is that a lot of people are going to tap back into gratitude. Mm. That's so beautiful, man. I, I love the, it, again, it just, it just makes sense. These door pathways get shut down because we're playing these loops or we've got this trauma that just, it shut the door. And, and this is, and then we go, I, the question is, how do you open the door? And, um, you know, body, like you're saying, it's like people, when they want to get to that moment, they want to search and they have intention that they're going to start looking and gratitude's a way to that. And these, these, like you said, these, these psychedelics have shown to open these doors. They're proven pathways, like you're saying. And, uh, the more people, you know, that are talking about this, the more, and I know you've been posting stuff about it becoming more legal in different places and people are kind of wising up to that. Um, the quicker, we can people can find their gratitude, find their passion, get back to that present moment. And when we're back, you know, and, and bottom line is when we're back to loving ourselves or loving life, then we go out and we don't get in fights with people. We're not arguing. We're not in a hurry. The you know, um, hate all those things, hate and all that's living in the mind. You know, I'd like to think it's it's live. It lives because people have a lot of problems that are just built up inside of them and if we can figure out a way to get past that, right. To come back to, I love myself, then we can actually look out and love other people. Like we were saying. So it's a, yeah, there's a lot of hope there. There really is a lot of hope. And I think also, um, you know, these uh, opportunities, you know, that we have is that we're realizing that in your DNA, uh, not only is there all of the, you know, the, the, information related to you know how to build different proteins for you and what to do but there's also a lot of stored uh information in your dna maybe from your grandparents your great grandparents your great 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 grandparents and it's like if you go back in anybody's lineage far enough you'll find some serious trauma and ptsd so the the quite so if we are reacting to things that is in our DNA, maybe not even something that happened to us, then how could we possibly solve that with, you know, talking about it or, you know, using some traditional technique to actually change the DNA? I think without psychedelic medicines, that's probably impossible. It may take a number of years till scientists have proven this out. And, you know, we're putting stuff in the water instead of fluoride, we're putting you know, psilocin in there or something like that. But I just feel, you know, a lot of gratitude for living in this moment where, you know, people understand basic science and we have the technology and we have these amazing plants that we get to reconnect with and we get to use them and solve this mental health crisis and the addiction crisis, all these things. I have a ton of gratitude that that these things exist. And, and a lot of times people say like, how do you, how are you optimistic? You know, when you look around and everything's so disrupted and I'm like, well, because I can see that psychedelics are, are, are coming right in this moment to disintermediate, you know, this problem that we're having. And, and for that, I have a ton of gratitude. That's beautiful, man. And you know, that just uh, is, I was reading earlier today. It's like, you know, people look out because people have this outlook of the world because they are watching the news too much where the reality is we're, we're living. The reality is we're living longer. We have healthier lives. We have, you know, there's, there's better. Every, everything is better than it was say 10 years ago. It's not worse. <laughs> you know, bottom line, as much as you want to, as much as people want to say, no, no, no. Bottom line is life. You know, if, if you're living today and you're seeing this, life's pretty good. Uh, it's definitely better than it was 10 years ago. And man, is it better than 100 years ago, right? We're talking about we we get to live only what kings could fantasize about hundreds of years ago. We get that yeah. every day. We're spoiled so much that we don't know how good we have it. And that's where gratitude comes in. The whole reminder <laughs> that you got it so good, right? That magic, that miracle is happening. So um, so thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate you sharing the documentary with me. I really I really enjoyed it. Um, we have more time. I would definitely want to talk more about it. I remember watching it and just going, uh, I love how you had his family and his kids in there, man. Yeah. I felt like that that element of seeing him have his experience, but then seeing his family, you know, um, 
relating to it and seeing him come out of this trance or whatever, you know, be coming back to himself and being present with them was just a beautiful uh, overarch that stuck out to me. And I loved that even though you were, you know, guiding him in this, that you didn't take, you know, you didn't, you could have because you're the director, but you chose not to take the center stage, which is a very humble way to tell the story because it was about, wasn't about you, wasn't really about him. It was about the experience, about the power of what can happen, right? Yeah, exactly. And and I, I thought he was such a great subject because a lot of people, millions of people really feel like they know him and are connected. So whatever I was saying, they had to filter it through. Well, I don't really know this guy. But when they saw Lamar go through it, they're like, well, I know that guy. I know how he acts in those circumstances. I know what his you know, regular frequency is. I know when he's doing better. So it's like he was kind of the dream subject because so many people – feel like they really have kind of a personal relationship with him and i think he's going to be when the movie comes out here in the course of the next few months i think he's going to be like one of the lead spokespeople for you know it's okay to talk about mental health and i'm gonna you know try to you know just impart as much as i can that you know sharing this and having gratitude is the way to kind of pay it forward and uh you know like i said <clears throat> i think you and i are on the same track, if we could teach this in school, if we could teach this, you know, at all moments of life where people have tough things to go through, you know, just try to remind them to get into that gratitude moment. And then you create that all of a sudden you do gratitude, then you're in present moment awareness. Like you said, you can kind of see all these things around you and, and be present. And then, as I was saying before, in that moment you're creating this little bit of a space for that miracle to happen that you right. needed so rather than trying to fix things in the physical world just go into gratitude and you know make that your practice i think you're going to find that you 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 do a lot more and you accomplish a lot more and you have a less chaos if you just stay in gratitude and don't try to you know push the world physically to be what you want it to be just get into gratitude and you'll see that the world is, is pretty close and you can bring it closer with some more gratitude. That's beautiful. I think it's a great place to wrap it up. I appreciate you giving me the extra time there and just saying, you know, uh, the amazing thing about gratitude is like, it's, it's not you trying to control the world. It's just you being present and looking, appreciating what is, what is working for you. Like we said, what is working for you? And, and we start with the mindset of what is working for me. Um, simplistically if you're breathing right now you could start there and then we could you could build out from there but uh just the fact the lungs are working i remember you know when my mom her, her cancer metastasize itself into skin cancer and she when i saw that she had to have oxygen when you start to see again so much to be grateful for so many things working i know i'm going down the rabbit hole of gratitude yeah. but yeah. zappy I, re I really appreciate his time man today man you're awesome yeah. I, I hope we can maybe do a round two i know you're super busy so i'll, I'll definitely push that ask off for a while but uh you have a wonderful day, man, and uh, I really do appreciate you talking with you today. Thank you, and I, I appreciate your your book that you have out, and so I'm really looking forward to the next one. I think giving people the mechanics of that is exactly what people need. They could just try it in their own life and instantaneously realize that this is the path. Thanks, man. Well, I'm excited. I'll, when that come, comes out, I have to let you know more about it, and uh, and we hope we can talk more about it. So have a Thanks. wonderful day, Zappy. Really appreciate you, man. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thanks, Sam. Bye. Bye. John F. Kennedy.
he said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them.